Welcome back to PRN Test Drive. I'm James, and this is the 2024 Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio. And it is the last Stelvio Quadrifoglio that's going to be sold here in North America. So naturally, when it came across my desk, even though my friends in Ontario already took a look at the nice shiny red one, I saw that I had a different color, so I had to jump on it because I've actually never driven the Alfa Romeo Stelvio before. So I've been very spoiled in the fact that I've got the Performance Quadrifoglio version at my hands for the very first time, and I've been absolutely spoiled this week. So I guess the question a lot of people are gonna ask is why Quadrifoglio and not just a normal Stelvio? They do kind of look very similar. You kind of get like the nice front end. You get the same daytime running LEDs. You get nice rims. It looks pretty similar and the space, you know, nothing changes there either. And I have one word or maybe two words that a lot of enthusiasts like to use. Exhausts and performance because this Stelvio Quadrifoglio is powered by a 2.9 liter twin turbo V6 engine that outputs 505 horsepower, 443 pound feet of torque. Did I mention that this is an SUV? doing these ridiculous numbers. We don't have a lot of SUVs that could output this kind of power nowadays. So the fact that it's dying is unfortunate, but it is your last chance to get your hands on something extremely unique looking, extremely like driver oriented, driver focused, and just performance out the wad. And also the exhaust sounds phenomenal. Now I've also got an eight speed automatic transmission and all wheel drive, which is going to be pretty good news if you want to use it in somewhere that has snow. When it comes to winter time, which is coming sooner than we all think, I don't have to park this thing. I can simply take it out in any weather with some decent winter tires on, and I'm going to have just as much fun as I've been having this week and all summer if you were to own one of these things. Now the Quadrifoglio Stelvio comes with a base price of $103,295 Canadian, but I have some add-ons, like I've got an assisted driving package, not the full one with the lane centering assist, just the basic one. I also have the red painted brake calipers and my paint coat is not free either. So that is gonna give us an as tested price of $109,440 Canadian. So I don't know about you, but I'm tired of standing outside the car because although it looks fantastic, it is an absolute fashion statement. That's probably why you see, you know, not so many Stelvios on the road, not so many Alfa Romeos on the road in general, but that's not where it's at. The driving is where it's at. Let's get on the road. I'll talk to you more about it. All right, on the road where the Stelvio Quadrifoglio belongs and on the road with it for the final time ever and also you know, my first experience with it ever. And I could tell you that it's been pretty decent space-wise. Like I really did enjoy having an SUV that has quite a bit of power. It's like, it's, it's something that you don't think about when you're just driving an everyday SUV. But then when you have something that has fi over 500 horsepower, it's kind of fun to own it, you know, for a week, because you kind of have the power to beat anybody. And also you've got the space that, you know, me as kind of like a new dad needs with like fits my stroller, plenty of space for my wife and my baby in the back seat, stuff like that. Like I've just got, it's got it all covered and my enthusiast side is very happy, which like I said, a lot of the times when you, when I take an SUV, you kind of trade off, you get comfort and space, but you don't necessarily get speed and performance. Well, the Stelvio fixes quite a bit of those problems, you know, for an enthusiast. I even have, I've got a dial, right? I've got the normal DNA D4 sport mode, which is what I'm pretty much always driving it in. And then you can hold it and put it in race mode. You also have N for basically like, you know, the middle of the pack kind of one. And I also have A, which is mostly like considered eco mode, but let me put it in manual mode and race mode here. Let's go. Oh yeah. Oh, just a nuisance to my neighborhood. Oh my God. <laughs> and you know, like Nile, this is one of the SUVs that has gotten me in a little bit of trouble. Not again, just like Nile, not with the law, but with others uh, not enjoying the fact that this is a loud SUV and a quick SUV. People don't seem to take very kindly to that, especially when I myself look like a child. Um, I tend to get a lot of flack for it, but uh, that's what I mean when I tell you my enthusiast side is very much fulfilled because loud cars, loud exhaust is very much an enthusiast thing. 
and I mean, this is just an enthusiast SUV like through and through. And also there's just nothing that looks like it. Like, you know, the styling of an Alfa Romeo in general, it's, it's hard to beat and it's hard to match. And a lot of the times, if you know a little bit about vehicles, you, you know what an Alfa Romeo is when it, when it passes you on a road. I definitely do. And then when you see that clover on the side, you know it's packing a punch. Like I drove the Julia, handled phenomenally. And it wasn't even the Quadrifoglio. It was just the, you know, the, the Veloce trim. So I had the all-wheel drive there too. But still, what a vehicle. And I can only imagine the Julia with the Quadrifoglio treatment, that thing must be a little monster because this SUV is a little demon, but I can't imagine if it had a little bit less weight, this thing would fly. So once you're up to highway speed, once you're on the highway, how's the ride quality? Like I did take a little trip up to Granby Zoo, Quebec. Um, so that's about like an hour, two hours. It's a bit of a mix of long highway stretches and traffic. Uh, it did better on the highway fuel economy wise than in traffic, obviously. This is definitely not a city driving car, which I do do a lot of city driving, unfortunately, but on the highway, it's pretty good. My average has been 13.5 liters per 100 kilometers, so that's good. And then ride quality is obviously a lot better on the highway, like in slow moving streets, in big potholes, this suspension, no matter what mode you put it in, no matter if you have your dampers active in sport mode or your mid dampers active in race mode, it's a very, very stiff suspension. It's a very rough ride. That's the kind of thing that is like, ah, it's, it's one of the, the biggest like negatives against the Stelvio Quadrifoglio is just that like it has everything that you would want out of a basic SUV except for a decent ride quality. Like it's not horrible. My, you know, it didn't wake up my kid. Like it wasn't anything that was like, oh my God, I could never do this. It was just like when you see an SUV and when you're paying this much money, you maybe want a little bit of comfort. It's like, that's the only thing to me that it's missing to be the entire nine yards, right? Uh, we've got our performance, we've got our space, but we're just missing the comfort. Specifically, I feel it a lot in the rear. Like when I go over big speed bumps, I feel the rear just slam down. And that is, again, in any mode, it doesn't seem to, to discriminate at all. And with my dampers active or not, it's just very rough. Oh my God, that exhaust noise. Ah, that vibration that you get out of it. Ugh. Like last week I had the Mustang GT, which was like just a screamer of a V8. And then you get the V6 twin turbo, a little quieter, but like classy, if you will. Very Italian, you know, like it's high pitched, a little bit more high pitched and you still get like the, the vibrating gurgles and you feel it. You kind of feel it through the transmission and the cars. And I like to drive this thing in manual mode because we've got these very nice paddle shifters, right? I really love Alfa Romeo's column mounted paddle shifters. I said I missed it when I drove the Tonali. That was no joke. I really love having them back here. And it's one of this, the rare times where a vehicle is an automatic, an eight-speed automatic, but I keep it in manual mode a lot of the time when I'm driving in sport mode or when I'm driving kind of just during, you know, filming and stuff like that. Usually I'll knock it back into to, to automatic, but now I'm driving in full manual. But the only thing is, is it does kind of take control. Like I, like right now I'm in sixth and I can't shift up. Like it won't let me do it uh, because I don't think I'm going the right speeds for it to let me shift up. I can shift down. That'll kind of raise the revs and then I can shift up again, but I can't go into seventh or eighth. Uh, it, it'll, it's kind of doing it for me. So it's like a, it's a manual mode that like definitely you can get the launch out of it and you can have the, you can really get the burbles out when you're doing the manual mode shifting, uh, but it will control things for you. It will down and upshift for you. I guess that's kind of to protect its transmission, but when it does let me upshift, it's a lightning quick. It's very quick on the downshift, very quick on the upshift. So this thing on the track would be really interesting to see how it performs. Now the suspension is rough, but the seats are quite good. I like the bolstering here. I like the way that it holds me. You can option some racing seats, but I don't know. I feel like if you're, if you want this to be like your absolute daily driver and it's not just like a track weapon, then you're going to want to go with the non-racing seats, the seats that you see here in this video. I think that's the, the best solution for like, you know, your longer road trips and your longer drives. It's probably going to be more comfortable. We interrupt this message for a quick rippy. And that's not even going that fast. That's just using the manual mode and doing that. But anyways, back to the comfort of it. I mean, 
I like the seats. I like that we have kind of like this little thing here that we can adjust for your leg support. You know, it gives me the luxurious kind of feel of it. Um, I also really like the steering wheel. D-cut, red start button, love that. I love the little Alcantara trim that I have for my fingers. I still get the grip from like the leather steering wheel, so I'm not sliding around on it like you would on some Alcantara surfaces if it was full, uh, but I have the knife for my fingers, which should help it age well, and it just feels really high quality. I've got like kind of the carbon fiber with the clover on the inside that just lets you know you're driving it. Got the Italian flag right next to my shifter. I like the DNA stuff. Uh, I, you know, it's pretty much the same on every Alfa Romeo that I've driven, so really no huge thing there. I've got Apple CarPlay, I've got Android Auto. The screen is small. Like, there's no way to hide it. The screen is small on the Stelvio in general. I think it's pretty small on the Julia as well. They've done a good job at integrating it into the dashboard so that it doesn't feel that small. Like, it's kind of like, you know, playing a little brain tricks, but when you first step in, you're really going to notice how tiny that infotainment display truly is. Um, it's okay for navigation and stuff, like it still works. I'm not like, I'm not like, you know, squinting and like adjusting my glasses to try to see where I'm trying to go. But it's, uh, yeah, definitely for 2024 technology wise on the limited side and on the small side. I'll say as well that the backup camera is, uh, you know, dated and it's showing. And also we do have parking sensors, which is a good thing, but we don't have any 360 degree cameras, which to me is not great, especially at this price point. I feel like you should just throw it all in here, especially for the last year. You should just throw it all in here. And I don't have like real carbon fiber here around the cabin. I do like the kind of like the stitching that it looks like around the cabin here. It looks pretty nice. It looks very clean and elegant, which is what I expect from an Alfa Romeo but I feel like they, they missed an opportunity to just go absolutely nuts, charge whatever they want. It's the last one, put carbon fiber everywhere, just make it look ridiculous, you know? Uh, and they, for some reason, didn't do it. And I found it, I find it interesting that they wouldn't take the opportunity to just, you know, go for it. Because I think this is the last version of the Quadrifoglio in North America, people would probably buy it even at a higher price point if you gave them like crazy carbon fiber. Also, I have heated seats and I have heated steering, which is gonna be very important for the winter, but I don't have any ventilated seats, which again, high price point should be there, should be pretty much standard on the Quadrifoglio if you ask me, especially if you get the comfortable seats. I've also got a Harman Kardon sound system, which does the job better than most sound systems, not too bad. You kind of have to have an upgraded sound system again for the price point that Alfa Romeo wants you to pay for these things. So that is good news as well. I have to agree with Niall when he says that, you know, you're not buying an Alfa Romeo because it's the best you know, that money can buy because the BMWs and the Mercedes and the Audis of the world kind of have the performance and the luxury very much figured out. You buy it because you'll want to stand out, because you'll want to look cool driving down the street in a quadrifolio and because the sound is really, really good and you've got these column mounted paddle shifters. Sure, you know, Mercedes is refined and everything like that, but it doesn't look like an Alfa Romeo. It doesn't perform like an Alfa Romeo because you can't get an Alfa Romeo without buying it. You know, like it's just, it's just one of those things that stand out and you know, you're just a unique person if you buy one of these and it shows because not a lot of Stelvios and not a lot of Quadrifoglio Stelvios are on my roads here in Quebec either. So you're buying it more for that. Overall, it's been a very solid week. It's been a very solid SUV. I wish the ride quality was better. I wish the tech was improved. I just wish that their last version of it was their best foot forward. And I just feel like they kind of just put out the same thing that they kind of did last year and were like, well, we're not gonna make it anymore, other, either because nobody's buying it or because they wanna replace it something with, uh, you know, with an electric motor. Who knows if we'll see the Stelvio Quadrifoglio again. If we don't, I mean, I'm okay with the fact that this is the last time. It sucks. I hate it when, you know, vehicles die off because I don't I don't get multiple repeat times with them. But just like the F1 team, sometimes good things have to come to an end. And the same thing is going to be said for the Alfa, Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio and the Giulia Quadrifoglio. Hopefully we can get our hands on, you know, the Giulia Quadrifoglio before it takes its last final ride off into the sunset. But I'm very glad to have featured this. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, you don't want to miss another video because we've got stacked cars all year round. If, if this year has been any indication of what we can do, then there's just more and more and more to come. So with that being said, I'll leave it there for the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio. See you in the next week. See you in the next car. Take care.